Access Fort Wayne offers reflections of our community. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne are a service of the Allen County Public Library. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting organizations. For more information about creating your own television program with Access Fort Wayne, call 421-1250. Hello, I'm John Dickmeyer. Welcome to Potpourri. I've got a good buddy with me today. My good buddy is Joe Jackson. Hi, Joe. How you doing again, bud? Nice to see we're, you. We're doing great today. And, oh, you do more stuff and and are involved in more stuff. And, and so I'm going to let you just... <laughs> Where do you want to start? Well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, once again. <laughs> the beginning is probably some of the stuff that you're writing. Tell us about what you're writing. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, my writing started 20, about 30 years ago after I read my first Dr. Seuss book. And I started writing ever since then, started collecting things, putting things in my files. Um, and now everything's starting to play off. Um, we need to tell everybody that, that, you, that, that your writing, uh, a lot of your writing is uh, directed at children. It's children, children's it's, material. Children's and um, young adults, juveniles, I like to help expand their minds, their horizons, help with their, the young children. I like to uh, help them expand their imagination. Um, I like to uh, help them learn how to read, get them started on that. And it's always about a life lesson too. It's, you know, uh, true to life fiction, um, I like to call it. thing about uh, Joe is He's not going to go out there and give you a lot of fanciful stuff. No. no. Joe, Joe, you like to give real life experiences when you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all it's all about. I mean, it's all a life lesson. We all got to help each other. And this is just how I contribute to society. Um, good Lord, he gave me a gift and a talent. And I've honed in on it with my friends. Um, with um, my wife, she's helped me uh, direct me. Um, she's helped settle me down. And for 20 years, we've been working to get to this point here. We've been collecting everything. Um, and finally made it, but she didn't make it with me, apparently. Oh, um, tell, uh, uh, but I, I, hate to br I hate to break in, but since you mentioned Sarah, we we need to uh, to mention a few words about Sarah. Sarah was a super lady, uh, a lady that I'm sorry, I've never been able to interview on on set, but every time I've talked to her, she is so she was so connected to all the people around her yeah. and and so loving yeah. and and uh, really, really helped Joe with a lot of the things that he's doing. Oh yeah, if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have um, continued in this stuff. I probably would have continued in uh, parties, rock and roll, you know, but she grounded me, she centered me and um, told me you know, showed me and um, reminded me where my direction needs to be. 
She's always said that um, I've got something to say, and I've got a good way to say it to people. And that's where she wants me to go, and she told me to never give up on this. Well, I interrupted you, so uh, because I interrupted you, we have to track back to the uh, children's books. Okay, the children's books, yeah, the um, My Adventure's Day. Looking for that to be in my hand here, the hardback here, in about a day or two. So that's your that's your next production. Yep. Give yep. that to the people on uh, out there in uh, the <laughs> land we can't see. Okay. Um, if you want to see firsthand right now, you go to uh, www That's dash e y e promotions dot com. You go to the works page. And you see my title worked on the children's book that's getting ready to be in my hand. And I got to start the readings on that. Um, Give the name of the book again, please. Uh, my Adventurous Day. And then um, got my book of short stories that will be on there. That will be out next year. And then after that, we're going to be working on another children's book and coloring books and activity books for kids. And a lot of this is going to be made by kids for kids. So in that, we hope it helps expand their imagination more and helps them be more creative where they want to go in a direction in their future. So everything that we do here has a plan for tomorrow, for the next person. That's what we always try and do. Don't you think uh, that... Back a few years ago, and I'll take it back as far as I am old, but I think we had more uh, chances to explore our imagination and to be more uh, creative. Just kids without a whole lot of adult direction. Yeah. I, and I. I really think that that's important, that in today's world we're so quick to make kids into adults. Yeah. And I, I have a real problem with that because a, a part of this whole business of imagination that you've talked about mm -hmm. has to do with... Uh, kids exploring the way they want to explore. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, my story, my adventures day, that is, um, that was a fear of mine of being lost and um, losing my mom in a grocery store, you know, because I grew up in a time when it was, when things started getting rough on a transition with kids being abducted and things like that. So that, that was a way for me to um, um, to get over a fear of mine still being an adult. And I know that it can help the children express themselves better to help to explain things that they need to get out more. If I explain that good, I don't know. But, so It's great. I... I agree with you. Uh, my time here at the Allen County Public Library, we saw all kinds of kids that were separated f from their parents, and sometimes they were very adventurous, mm -hmm. and they didn't really know. But a lot of times we had kids that were really scared yeah. and and there are all kinds of reactions mm -hmm. what were your reactions uh when you were separated from your parents what back back then? oh it was scary um, i never i mainly grew up with my mom um she um my mom if it wasn't for my mom i definitely wouldn't be here where i'm at now she my mom she uh recognized the talent and the skills that I had and she pretty much directed me with uh, with my heart 
and what I'm supposed to do for the next person in line. You know, he's, you know, 65 cents you got in change, give it to the next guy behind you. You know, so I try and do that with my stories. You know, everything that I've learned that I've learned from you. You know, that would be in other stories, you know, then life lessons. My good friend, Patty Hunter. You know, everything that I've learned within the past couple of years, they're all going to be put down on paper some way or another as a life lesson that I've learned. And I, I kind of write my stories in a way that for people that don't like to read, people that don't like to read, I, I write it in a, in a certain way to where they get interested and they want to turn the page. They want to keep turning the pages. And so far, it's worked. I mean, I've gotten a lot of people back into reading, you know, cuddle up with books. And that's, um, I like that. I like to see people reading and expand their imagination. I think that very often times, you know, when you're talking about people who aren't very good at reading, that uh, they're interested in more basic things rather than the real technical things. Oh yeah, I keep simplicity in my writing, you know, down to earth. I don't try and put the big fancy words in there. I keep everything layman terms to where the person that don't know too much, uh, um, too many words, it keeps it simplified for them because I don't want to scare people away with the big words and fancy text, so I just go with the flow, but a lot of my stories, I don't even remember writing. They pretty much take on a mind of their own, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's interesting. I think a number of writers are like that. Um, it's more writing by inspiration. I believe so. And, and do you find that any of your material comes to you in a dream? At night, do you catch it then? Well, yeah, it's funny that you mention that because this, um, I was just um, wanted to talk to you about this story, Man's Final Goodbye, the first daily log found. This is what I was talking about as far as people writing down their ideas. This came to me in a dream here. It was a nightmare um, about two weeks before 9-11. It's strange. Um, I woke up sweating crying. My wife, she woke up, got me a paper towel, started rubbing me on the back, back of my head, telling me everything's going to be all right, everything's going to be all right. I started writing notes down, and then the story just started taking its own place, and then I just started looking for a home for it, and the University of Texas picked it up. And you know it's a good story when you don't remember writing it, but you know that you had the pen in your hand because the story, like you said, it gets its own inspiration and it takes off itself. You know, I'm just a guide of something that needs to be told, it seems like. I don't know if that sounds funny or weird to people or, but. I'm gonna talk really fancy here, but real art takes on a life of its own. <laughs> And, and that's true of writing like you do. It's true of good music. Mm -hmm. And it's, good, it's true of good visual art where there's painting yeah. involved. I would have never believed it until I started, until I finished my first story. Once I finished my first story, then yeah, everything that you just said, I, un I understand. And, and now I've got a whole new appreciation for all kinds of art, any kind of art, because I know what it takes now. You know, it's just not writing. It's just not music. It's, it's tap. It's, it's, um, it's just a vocal of poetry. It's William Shatner, even his kind of music. I kind of find... Um, uh, kind of uh, interest in that now, where what's that kind of, that he does, where there's the music and then he talks behind it. Yes, that that there's, I even find um, satisfaction in that now. <laughs> it, 
I, did, I, I, I was just thinking of something, and I, I, I think this is true. I think we have defined what good art is. Good art is creative work that takes on a life of its own. Yeah, yep. Now, now I can determine what is true art and just what's thrown out there in pop culture. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, there is a big difference of what people say is art and what is actually art, I, know, I notice. And, you know, there are people out there that are mechanically okay. Mm -hmm. They know the science of doing it. And there is there's a there's a science of drawing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And 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 there's a science of making music. I mean, you can. Yeah. Uh, you can go to you <laughs> can go to school, and learn the mathematics on how to make. Yeah. A musical composition. Yeah, yeah we was working with um, a little Chewy, and never thought we was going to get into the music industry whatsoever. But man, that, that kid, he um, never went to school for it, but he knows how to work that, he knows how to edit, works the keyboard and all that. And I'm like amazed. That was like a big adventure for me to go inside the studio and watch how that art form was made right there. You know, just uh, pick that music up just, you know, just by changing the sounds and the vocals a little bit here and a little bit. That's all an art form, you know? And it's, um, I, I, I respect somebody more like Little Chewy with the creativity he's got than somebody say like, um, somebody that's got a whole bunch of backing behind like P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, because he's he's all, Puff Daddy's more commercialized, you know, and Lil Chewy, people like him, people more down to earth are more artistic. Manufactured music. Manufactured, yeah. Is, is what we're talking about or manufactured writing mm -hmm. or manufactured this or manufactured yeah, there's a difference. that. There's a difference and people are a little bit confused <laughs> on what manufactured art and then what actual art is. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, mm -hmm. art, it comes from the soul. Yeah, yes it does, yes it does. And everything that I do, I try and, you know, it's all a divine intervention. I try to I try not to let anything, I try not to interfere with anything. I just let everything go, as it, and if it succeeds, it succeeds. If it works, it's like the track program. You know, I found, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know the people involved in that, but I knew there was something there because it had the, you know, the for the children, and there was something there, so me, I'm the type of guy, I wanted to go and stick my nose in that business, you know. I wanted to see what was going on, and I fell in love with them. I fell in love with the whole program. I fell in love with Track, Three Rivers Art Center for Kids. Who would have thought of anything like that, you know? Terry Dorn. <laughs> Terry Dorn. Terry Dorn. And who would have thought that the person that won the writing contest that I started through Fresh Eye Promotions was going to be Patty Hunter, a producer here that knows Terry Dorn, that and everything's falling into place as a divine intervention. See, I mean, so they're helping me out. I'm helping them out. We're helping out a lot more people just by the process of networking. <laughs> and I that, believe in networking. Um, I believe in business networking, but I also believe in social networking. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's a good way to build what you want to build. So yeah, it's not. It's um, do it, that. It wasn't. It wasn't fresh eye. It's not nothing that I need to build for me. It's fresh eye. You know, it's there. It's got the works page on there from my books. You know, for me for that. But fresh eye is there for everybody else. It's for everybody else to bring something to the table, something that they can contribute. I want, I want everything there so everybody can see something positive that everybody has something to say. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I admire about you. It's not that you're out there for yourself. 
it's you're out there for everybody else oh, yeah. first, and and that's what it's all about. Yeah, you wake up every day to live, love, learn, and teach, and then you go to sleep thinking about how to do that the next day. <laughs> that's we, the only thing I know how to do. We need to back up a little bit. You wake up every day to, to live, love, learn, and teach. Live, love, learn, mm -hmm. and teach. Yep. And then I go to sleep every night to think about how to do that the next day. So that's all I ask is everybody just give me a chance through my writing and everything else I do to expand this and I can, we can take this and everything I do and help as many as we can and just give me 15 seconds with my Lord at the end of my life to, for, between me and him. And everything else is about everything that he created, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to 9-11 and, and go back to the piece we have in front of us. Uh, I want all of you to explore this yourself, but maybe we can give you a few hints mm -hmm. as, to, as to where uh, Joe was going with this. Okay. Could, you, could you give us a few morsels, please? Okay. This, um, the man's final goodbye, like I said, I wrote as um, I started taking notes down as a nightmare before 9-11, a couple of weeks before it. Um, the dream was all in soldiers, but I turned this into a, an alien format, and it will be on the sci-fi channel within three to four years after I finished part two and part three. Um, we're going backwards on it, so I don't want anybody to get confused when they start reading it. It's, um, it's, um, a lot of people can't wait f for it to get done. They're excited about it. Same with uh, the short stories that I have here. It's, um, these are getting ready to be published next year. I've been working on these for a long time and it's got some great stories in there that um, editors and publishers have given me good reviews on. And I'm real excited about them because um, there's things in there, there's movies in there, and there's a couple plays in there that we're wanting to turn in. So, um. Joe, we've been talking about writing things, and you do a whole lot more than just writing. And I was sitting here with you before, and you're going to Atlanta coming up. What are you going to do in, in Atlanta? Well, I don't want to get too much into that right now. Um, the um, In Atlanta, what I am starting to do is we're going to start setting up safe houses around this country. Um, we got a, uh, there's a lot of things going on right now and there's, uh, since I've got the time, I'm going to be going around the country starting in Atlanta and we're going to be setting up safe houses for people that's in trouble. If we'll get more into that later on. What what kind of focus? I mean, there are a lot of different people that would need a safe house, but uh, what what um, what way what way would you like to move this? Um, it's would, it's uh, more. This is something that's. Man, it's already started. The ball's already rolling, and I'm not really sure how it's going to go. So this is what I mean by the divine intervention. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna go with what I know. I need to do. Go talk to the people I have to talk to. And we're gonna see where it goes from there. And that's all I can say about that for right so now. So you know that there are people that need to get away from whatever environment they're in. Yep. And there's people that's wanting to help around this country. And and indeed that and there are issues 
I mean, there's there there are all kinds of possibilities like abuse. There's abuse. There's um, Christian persecution. There's um, per uh, racial persecution. There's all kinds. Um, and I'm going to go and I'm going to just with what I've learned from everybody and through the process of networking, I'm just going to go and start setting up the networking process with everybody. So it doesn't really matter to you what the source of the problem is. It's just providing a safe place for a folks. safe place and everything will work out. I believe everything will work out as it plays out. Does that make sense? Everything it will, does. Everything will work out as it plays out if we're doing everything for the right reason. And we always do things for the right reason. That's why we're here right now. Let me, let me say this. I agree with you. Not everybody wears size 8 shoes. Mm -hmm. And because they don't, not everyone wears size 8 shoes, you need to be more inclusive instead of less inclusive about your solutions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, <laughs> I, that would seem to be the answer to the question. Yeah, yeah, it sure would. But um, <laughs> we don't know how things are going to turn out, though. So, you know, all I know is that I've got friends like you around this country, and we've all got an ambition and a goal to help the next person. That's why we do what we do, right? That's true. And we're going to take it to the next level. I'm going to ask you a question, and uh, it's actually more simple than I want it to appear to you. Uh, if you could see three things that you could do to help your country be a better country, what would you do? What three areas would you work in? Mm. It's a hard one. Um, definitely politics. I definitely have a passion for politics. I believe that um, I'm the type of guy, once I get into politics, I gotta talk fast and quick because I'm the type of guy that would be, that's gotta, would have a hit out on them real fast. So I gotta talk fast and quick, get the point out. Number one. Um, the money, I would like to be part of the money situation in this country because I understand where it's being lost at and where we can rediscover more of it. And number three. Well, definitely the education process. Definitely the education process. I am impressed. Of course, I'm always impressed when I talk with you. <laughs> well, I love talking to you, buddy. You're one of my favorite people. And, and I, I'm glad. <laughs> but you know, we've come to the end of our time here. Already? Already. You know time flies. <laughs> it when, does. When you're having fun. And I see it go like this. Uh, all of you, thanks for being with us. I'm John Dickmeyer. This is Joe Jackson. And this has been Potpourri.